uh, without knowing the HIV status of their partners. But also, uh, condom use is a, a problem of culture and religions. So sometimes uh, we should uh, discuss it uh, properly with uh, opinion leader in the re religions. And uh, one thing also that uh, we cannot force people to use condom because it's not easy to monitor whether they use condom or not. What we are doing now is trying to in give information that condom could uh, prevent transmission of HIV. Okay, let me move to um, the next slide, University of the Philippines. Uh, University of the Philippines, uh, do you have questions for Prof. Samsu? Hello? Uh, no questions from the Philippines. Okay, thank you. Um, we have two sides here. Uh, one in the Diliman, I guess, and the other one is Preginet. Uh, UP at Preginet, do you have any questions? Yeah, us? UP Diliman is um, not joining us today. Uh, this is from uh, Preginet. Okay. So, uh, no questions from our end. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Let's move to uh, University of Indonesia at Salemba sites. Salemba sites, do you have questions for us? Yes, we do have three questions. The first one is uh, maybe, uh, Professor, can you explain in, uh, further in, one, in what condition or in which setting uh, the routine screening is done? Maybe you can mention specific age or condition. Uh, the secondly, uh, can you explain further about the sperm washing? And the third question uh, come from my friend. Uh, uh, okay, uh, good morning, Prof. Samsu. The question is, uh, you've told us, uh, this continue the question from UGM, Gajah Mada. You told us about the virulent is less than, less than 1,500 has a low risk to transmit HIV. Is this the standard uh, number of virulent that doctor give permit to uh, people living with HIV to have children or there is a number of CD4 standard. Uh, the fact is three of my client at Bandung City has CD4 less than 300 but they be brave enough to have a children then their children has born, born and already checked uh, and the, their, wa their wife and their children has negative result. Thank you. Ue Depo Hello, UA Depox. Do you have any question for us? Hello. Okay, no response from UE Depox. Hello. Uh, hello? Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. For your Thank you, Professor, for your presentation. I have uh, two questions. Like, uh, as we see uh, in your presentation, we have uh, you asked that anti you said that antiretroviral uh, drug for uh, prevention of transmission. Uh, we we in previous lectures we have seen that. Uh, Antiretroviral drug start from when CD4, CD4 level, level will be 400 like this. But Welcome this to Unified Conferencing. Uh, uh, but before this is also uh, the uh, virus load is upper in uh, patient. Uh, that, that we start, uh, when we start the antiretroviral drug uh, for prevention purpose, and the other question is if uh, if antiretroviral drug suppress the viral road uh, is uh, CD CD4 count increase or not if it is increased why we cannot eliminate uh, virus in human beings this is thank you okay prof samsu please uh, thank you yeah um, there is a perception from uh, community that HIV testing is only 
needed for special group like uh, female sex workers or uh, uh, people who injected uh, drugs. But actually, now we know that from our clinic that a lot of uh, cases uh, detected HIV is not coming. Is also uh, not only coming from female sex worker or IDU. They are they are considered to be a common people. So that why the testing now is uh, we hope that everybody should consider whether they could join the testing or not. Uh, as uh, some cases. Uh, wife who uh, infected from their husbands, uh, they don't have a risky behavior. They have only uh, sexual relation with uh, their husband, but they are infected. So that's why now we try to uh, coverage more people HIV testing, not only uh, specific group which are considered to, to, to be testing, but also common people we encourage to test. Uh, about sperm washing, this is a very technical uh, question. So, uh, uh, sperm is collected, and after that, uh, by adding some buffer or sodium chloride, it will be centrifuge. So we will have the uh, the delete and also the solution. The solution will uh, discard and we give again the buffer uh, several times, five to six times, to wash the sperm from the lymphocyte which uh, contain the HIV. After that, the, the, the last uh, the sperm uh, will be diluted and after that inseminated to uh, the, the wife or uh, female uh, partners. And by this technique, uh, risk of uh, transmission from uh, this kind of uh, methods is very, very low compared with without uh, sperm washing. Without sperm washing, there is still a risk for 4%. Uh, of their female to be infected, if although their husband may be already very low uh, uh, viral load. So the viral load 1,500 is uh, from one of the study uh, I present in this uh, sessions. Actually, uh, antiretroviral uh, could achieve less than 1,500. After one year, after one year antiretroviral treatment, continuously, uh, we have a lot of cases, maybe 80% of our uh, cases, less than 50, actually. So it's very, very low. But uh, in this study, I present that although less than 1,500, the transmission already uh, reduced. <coughs> this is very important. If you use the antiretroviral for pregnant women, which is HIV positive, before delivery or before uh, surgery, sexual cesarean surgery, if we could uh, count the viral load and it less than 1,500, it means that the risk for the baby is very, very low. Although we, they don't have uh, surgery, maybe the baby is still not yet. We are not, uh, we are not infected. From uh, UE Depok uh, about uh, the purpose of antiretroviral for uh, prevention, uh, I think the good example is for HIV pregnant women. Uh, as I mentioned that uh, all pregnant women without considering the CD4 should get antiretroviral for prevention of IG for their baby. So in prevention, we don't 
consider the CD4 of HIV pregnant women. All HIV pregnant women should get antiretroviral to prevent it, uh, to prevent HIV to their children. I think it's uh, all. Okay. Um, it seems that we have a question from all sides. Um, I would like to call for all sides. If you have still one or two questions, then we will. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask a question. This is from Kuala Lumpur. I want to know what is the notification policy in Indonesia if let's say the uh, patient has uh, been tested to be HIV positive, uh, do you all do uh, things like contact tracing and would that be mandatory? And the other thing is that when you notify to the local health authorities, how, how, the, how is the process? Uh, do you need to get the permission of the HIV patient or you can just do it you know, um, um, as usual, because it's a public policy problem. Hello? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, about notification, all the positive cases uh, will be reported to Ministry of Health, but without name, without address of the people living with HIV. Only uh, sex or age uh, or the area like or what kind of district central jakarta or something like that for the statistic, statistical purpose but not uh, uh, mention who and where and who are the so notification is only for statistical uh, epidemiological uh, purpose about uh, tracing the uh, we encourage uh, like we have a husband who is positive. We encourage also the contact to be tested, but it at the voluntary basis, not mandatory basis. Okay, we will conclude the sessions now. Um, we will we will have a break for five to ten minutes to prepare for the uh, panel discussions. Thank you all sides to join us this morning. We will come back after five, ten minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, Professor, Professor Fahir. Yeah. Uh, this yes. Is from Before going okay. to, to, to have the break, I would like to suggest that maybe the microphones from, from your side, uh, maybe they are not functioning properly because we missed some of the messages uh, from Professor Sam so far. Thank you. Maybe your okay, technician has to look after it. Uh, something to okay. do. To okay. Improve it. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. I will see you in five ten minutes. Okay. Yes, that's OE, OE. Testing. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, this is UI. Yeah, we are from Diponegoro University. Yes. Okay. Can you hear clear? I mean that the audio is clear, but we cannot see your picture. Okay. Yeah. Can you see me? 
Hi. Not yet. Not yes. yet, but I can hear you. Okay, because uh, when the presentation just uh, finished, uh, we cannot call you. Oh, okay. Uh, and now, it's okay. If, if you can hear me clearly, it's okay, even though you cannot see me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we, we cannot see you. But uh, how about uh, from your side? Can you see and hear clearly? Yeah, I can. Yes, I can hear you, but the picture uh, is, is not as good as before. Okay. How about? Okay. I don't know. I, I just I just suggest that uh, you disconnect first, and then uh, we reconnect again. Connect. Right. Yeah. Okay. I will ask the the uh, what we call it. Yeah, the IT officer here. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Welcome to Unified Conferencing. Uh, excuse me, Undip, can you hear and see us now? Uh, this is from Undip side. Yeah, so can you see it? Yeah, we can see you. Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Okay, yeah, that's great. Okay, thank you. Thank Please you. Uh, excuse me, uh, I just want to call uh, each side that uh, will present the, the presentation from the resource person. So Philippines, will you display the presentation from your side? Uh, we forwarded the presentation to the organizer, so I think the, the presentation will come from your side. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So I will, I will, I will show the, the presentation from uh, UI. Okay, how about uh, Timor Leste? Will you display the presentation from your site or you want me to uh, show the presentation from UI? Timor Leste? Okay, so I, I will move uh, and ask uh, Malaysia, Sarawak. Uh, can we have the presentation from UI, please? We don't have it in Malaysia. Oh, okay, yeah, so I will, I will show your presentation from here. And then, uh, so the last one I think is from UI, from, from Samsung Rizal, I think it's uh, no problem. Okay, yep, I think we will show. Good morning again, everybody. We will start with the um, panel discussions. We have uh, four countries that will present the country situation and country response to HIV AIDS uh, problem. Um, we will start with uh, the Philippines, then Timor Leste, uh, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Each of the speaker will have. 15 minutes to present the country situation and response. Uh, then we'll move to uh, the next country until we finish four speakers. Then we'll start with questions and answers. Um, I will start with a short introductions for the four speakers before we start with the Philippines. Um, from the Philippines, we have uh, Dr. Farshito Avellino. Uh, Dr. Afelino is currently the executive director of the Philippines National Aid Council. He had training on field epidemiology under the joint training program of the Philippine uh, Department of Health and the CDC Atlanta. Uh, Dr. Afelino holds several posts at the Department of Health before his appointment at the aid councils. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Dr. Mario Agustin. Uh, Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario Agustin currently is a senior uh, HIV advisor, uh, part of the um, UNAID Security and UNAID Security and Humanitarian Response um, in Timor Leste, and this is again part of the uh, United Nations Integrated Mission for Timor Leste. Uh, Dr. Agustin is a physician who has extensive experience in the HIV AIDS field, in the Caribbean region, and in Africa. Uh, our next speaker is from Malaysia. Dr. Karina Razali is currently a freelance and independent consultant for HIV AIDS. She holds PhD in mathematical modeling of HIV and hepatitis C epidemic in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, she taught epidemiology and biostatistics bio at the Department of Social in preventive medicine at the University of Malaysia between 2000 and 2004. And she is also the research support advisor at the Center of Excellence for Research in AIDS at the University of Malaysia. Uh, last but not least, our speaker uh, from Indonesia is Professor Samsuri Jalzauli. Um, I would like to introduce him again for the second time. Uh, Dr. Prof. Samsurijal is a professor of internal medicine at the School of Medicine, University of Indonesia. He holds a PhD in medicine from the University of Indonesia and a honorary fellow, American College of Medicine. He is a member of the working group on AIDS, University of Indonesia, and again, one of the pioneers in HIV AIDS research and treatment in the country. I now would like to invite um, Dr. Afelino from the Philippines to present his country situation and response. Please, Thank you. Dr. Avelino. Thank you and good morning. I will be presenting the Philippine experience on HIV. My presentation will cover two major parts. Part one will present the HIV epidemic or epidemiology in the country, while part two will present how we as a country respond to the health in societal threat of HIV. 
can have the next slide, yes. The Philippines remains a low prevalence country with reported HIV infection at less than 1.01% of the population. In 2007, the Philippines or the Philippine Department of Health and the World Health Organization estimated that there were 7,490 people living with HIV in the country, up from 6,000 estimates in 2002. Can have the next slide, please. Figures from the AIDS Registry of the Philippine Department of Health reported 66 HIV positive individuals for the month of April this year. This was 40% increase compared to the same period last year, which is 47. This figure brings the cumulative HIV positive, which is from January 1984 to April 2009, to 3,826 HIV positive. 3,016 or 79% were asymptomatic and 21% were AIDS cases. The age group of cases were showed that 22% belong to the 25 to 29 years age group, 20% belong to the 30 to 34 years, 17% for 35 to 39 years. 71% or 2,702 of cases reported were males. Sexual contact was the leading mode of transmission. Next slide, please. While the prevalence rate is low, trend in the last three years shows an increase in new infections. In the past year, an average of less than 20 new cases was reported monthly. But in 2008, the average rose to 44 new cases a month, and in 2009, 60 cases or above are noted to be reported monthly. Next slide. Having presented the short statistics on the HIV epidemic in the country, the Philippine HIV scenario shows the following facts. A steady increase of cases in the past three years has been noted. 34% uh, of all new cases were reported only in the last three years. Mode of transmission is sexual contact. Heterosexual was noted in the early part of the epidemic. However, a shifting to male having sex with males, or MSM, had been noted in the last years. And lastly, other groups with increasing risk for HIV had been observed among migrant workers and injecting drug users. Next slide, please. This slide shows the demographics of reported HIV cases from 1984 to March of this year. Next slide, please. This slide also provides the basic facts of the Philippine HIV epidemic. Can I have the next slide, please? The increasing number of HIV cases has been attributed to the following red flags identified in the country that seems to be fanning the epidemic. Analysis of our integrated HIV behavioral serologic surveillance data reveals that the following findings, less adequate knowledge on HIV and AIDS, female sex workers with only 2%, male having sex with males with 10%, injecting drug users at 26%, and clients of sex workers at 9%. Another red flag is the uh, in result of uh, 2008 UNGA's report, which shows that among PIP, the condom use rate is only 19%, while for MSM, it's only 32%. And also, we have high prevalence of sexually transmitted infection. While well, the incidence of injecting behavior is thought to be low, the IHBSS report indicates almost half or 48% of our IDU reported using sterile injecting equipment the last time they injected. 
it must be noted that the virus is known to spread at a faster rate amongst IDU. In 2007, it was estimated that there were about 10,000 to 20,000 IDU in the entire country. The proportion of female IDU is estimated at 10 to 15 percent and presents a key population at higher risk due to